see how we create an object in the definition module. OK, this <clears throat> is the configuration which we initially created under creating areas and diagrams. I have my background graphic in place for the diagram here, which I want to use. Um, and up here at the top, under objects, here <clears throat> are the different ways, methods I can create my object. And I'm going to use the object wizard in this instance. So I click on the object wizard, the first dialog box comes forth, and it welcomes me to the uh, wizard. Then I just click Next. And then I choose which object type I want to create. In this case, analog is selected default, and that's the kind of object I want to create. I want to give it the name Q1. And I can put in a description here. When I'm finished, I click Next. And then I'm asked to decide which atoms I want to use for this particular object. So in this case, I'm going to choose high alarm, actual value. I'm going to remove set point. I don't need set point, And just uh, keep low alarm. And these are, the, uh, these are the choices. I can keep the high scale and the low scale as well. Uh, this is my measuring range. OK, the driver, <clears throat> um, the SUTI3964R uh, driver is selected default for me. I only have one driver in this configuration. If I had several drivers, then I could choose another driver from the drop-down list. Node 0, that's fine. Uh, then. <clears throat> I have to decide um, if I want to have communication uh, between the PLC for specific, specific uh, addresses, uh, and I do. So then I'm going to click Driver Specific Addressing, and then I can begin, begin to set up my uh, data groups and word offsets here. I click OK to that. Uh, now I want to um, make sure that I've selected the correct I.O. mode for the atoms I'm using. High alarm, I want that to come in from the PLC. Actual value, I want that also to come in from the PLC. Low alarm, that will also be coming in from the PLC. Then I choose Next. And <clears throat> now, uh, two things I have to configure here. I have to configure the measuring range. I'm going to say uh, 100 and from 0 is the minimum. 100 is the maximum. Here I configure um, the alarm text I'm going to use for high alarm. And I click on the uh, menu there, and I get the next available alarm text in the system, which is 101, alarm priority. Uh, this may be a little bit more important alarm, so I'm going to give it a higher priority by giving it a higher number. Then you put in an alarm text. Like that. OK. And then I want to select a value. When uh, should the uh, high alarm be issued? Well, the high alarm should be issued maybe when the reading is, for example, 85. Low alarm. I have to remember to create a new alarm text. I want to give this a priority 10. I have to put in a text here. Perhaps uh, 
OK. And then the limit for the uh, low alarm, this should be perhaps 15. Good. Then I go on to the next step. And it asks me now how often I want to scan the particular process component here, Q1, for changes. So I'm going to say every 2,000 milliseconds. I click Next. Then the uh, next thing I have to decide is <clears throat> if I want to use BCL files to store historical data. And then I have to choose uh, one of the four BCL files values here. And I'm going to take two minutes. And I'm going to say, OK, I want to record an average and a minimum and a maximum for this particular object. Then I click Next. And it asks me now if I want to log changes. And then I'll say, OK, I only need to log changes above 1% changes in the process value on Q1. Next, um, it asks me now, <clears throat> how should the object be displayed on the mimic? Show the object's name, show the object's state and value, yes. Which color do you want to use on the symbol? Red. I could choose another color, green for example. Uh, then <clears throat> I choose uh, what kind of symbol I want to use for this particular object. Um, I want to go in and change the table to analog elements. And we'll take this symbol on the left called flow. I click finish. And my object is created and placed on the mimic in the upper left hand corner. And it's up to me now to decide where I want to place this particular object on the mimic diagram. So we'll put it here. Very important thing to remember, <clears throat> after you add new elements to your project or your configuration, is to do an install. And that you do by uh, uh, punching Control T. And then I'm asked if I want to save the changes in the current configuration. And I say yes. And then it asks me to install. And it asks me to choose the particular options I want to see under the installation. And I'm not going to select any of these uh, exceptions, but I'll just click OK. The installation has been completed with no errors. I'm very happy about that. This is the kind of uh, message I want to see. If I want to look at a report, then I click Yes. And a report over the configuration or the project is brought up in a note, or WordPad, and I can see a list of all the elements so far in my configuration. Thank you very much for your attention. For more information, go to our website, www.7tdk/igss.